What is the Apple ID? Where is the iCloud? Why am I always out of storage? Ah! We answer that and more in today's Groovy Tech, so stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Groovy Tony and welcome to Groovy Tech. Make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell as I post content regularly. Today we're going to break down Apple ID and iCloud. What's the difference? What do they mean? We're going to even talk about if you should buy iCloud storage and we're going to touch on family share. So let's jump in with my Memoji. So because Apple ID came first, let's start there. Your Apple ID in short is your purchasing power. It's how you make your purchases through the Apple ecosystem. So your iTunes, any book you buy, any music, any movie, any TV show, it gets paid through the Apple ID. App Store, any app you purchase, any in-app purchases, it gets paid through the Apple ID. Apple ID encompasses everything, including iCloud. So if you want to buy more storage on your iCloud for 99 cents a month, that's going to get paid through your Apple ID, as will your subscriptions. That's why in the main Apple ID manual you'll see, at the top, a place for your name, your phone number, your emails. Next, your password and security. After that, it's payment and shipping. Payment is your payment method when you're purchasing music and or apps, and shipping is the address used for those cards. Next, you have subscriptions, and in here you can manage any subscriptions you've subscribed through through iTunes or the App Store. Now, Apple ID also includes Family Share, and Family Share is actually a solution for a well-known issue that used to happen a lot, where two or three people would have the same Apple ID. And we'll get to that in a moment when we cover Family Share later in this video. Along the bottom, you're going to see all of the devices that you have connected to this Apple ID. So if you have an old device you no longer use, you can remove it. And if you see something that you don't know, a device you've never logged into, you can remove it and then change your password. So that's your Apple ID. And again, the main takeaway from this is that your Apple ID is your purchasing power. We'll get in more into Family Share in a moment after we tackle iCloud and storage. Now let's move to iCloud and storage. Now iCloud is literally just that. It is your storage. And you can see <laughs> I'm almost full. <laughs> and you might be as well. So let's break this down a little bit so we can understand it better. When we go into iCloud, I'm actually going to have a start a little bit lower down where it says backup. We'll start with backup and then we'll talk about these green buttons here. Let's go into backup. Now iCloud backup is great. Backup is actually a pixel for pixel copy of your phone's content in the cloud so that if anything ever happens to your device, you can always restore from that backup. Now backup is great because again, it copies everything into the cloud. So you don't have to worry about losing any of your information. However, it does come with drawbacks. There are three major drawbacks with backing up. Number one, now that we're no longer capped at 8 gigabytes, if you have a 512 gigabyte iPhone, backing up may take a very long time. <laughs> so time is definitely a factor. Number two, your backup backs up a pixel for pixel copy of everything. That means if there were any software issues in your previous device, those software issues are going to come onto your new device as well. And a third drawback in the backup is that backups are all or nothing. And I know that sounds a little bit strange, but what I mean by that is if you've backed up your phone and your phone breaks and you need to run to the Apple store to grab a new one, while you're in there, you'll have to wait to restore from your backup, which could take a few hours. But if you're heading to work and you need a file that's on your phone immediately, that's not really going to work out. So backup was actually supplemented with something else. We're going to go back into iCloud and we're going to talk about iCloud synchronization. So now that we know how iCloud backup works, let's talk about iCloud synchronization, photos and storage. Now iCloud synchronization is literally just a way for Apple to offload the work from backup and make things a little bit faster, a little bit easier and a lot more convenient. For example, with iCloud synchronization, you'll actually be able to pick out a single file that you need as opposed to an all or nothing backup in case of an emergency. Now, how does this work? 
Well, you see these little green icons here on the right? If you touch these buttons and turn them green, they're now synchronizing. Meaning, if I open up my map, I'll actually be able to see that information as well almost instantly. Synchronizing makes it so that all of this information is actually living up on the cloud and a small version of it is being represented on your device so that you can access it at any time. Now this concept may seem a little bit abstract, but you've actually been using cloud services for a very long time. One of the biggest cloud services in history is email. Think about it. Anytime you receive or send an email, it gets saved in that email server. Any computer that you log on to, you can see those emails. But those emails aren't physically really on any of your devices. It's in the email server, which is a cloud server. That's just how iCloud works. So you turn all of these icons on and it'll put these things on the iCloud and give you access to them everywhere. They will still take up a little bit of storage as it needs a small portion of these information to show it on the phone, especially when you're offline. Now, Apple took iCloud synchronization a step further by introducing iCloud Drive. And iCloud Drive allows you to actually store third-party information on the iCloud as well. And it allows you to check your desktop from your computer and truly connect all of your devices in a really cool file system. If you like this content, please comment and I can actually make an iCloud Drive video next. Photos. Photos are very interesting because oftentimes you're going to see the message that you're running out of storage on your device and you're running out of storage on your iCloud. And nine times out of 10, it is your pictures. And a lot of people think, hey, but I bought more iCloud storage. I should have all this storage now on my phone. Remember, like I said, your iCloud is going to store everything in that server for you, but a portion of the information needs to stay on your device. With photos, that portion of information is actually bigger. So it takes up more room on your device. So then how does optimized iPhone storage help me? Well, if you're someone who has a ton of photos and videos like me, optimized iPhone storage is great because although you're gonna eat up the storage on your iCloud and on your iPhone, it's not gonna take up all of the storage on both. It'll take up a little bit on either or, meaning I still have room to do things on my phone and well, my iCloud is pretty full right now, but that's a different story. But I have the ability to move around on my phone without having the pictures and videos take up all of the storage. Now you may be thinking, okay, well that's really cool. I can put all those pictures up there. However, I'm still running out of storage. Well, let's go back and let's tackle that. In here, you'll see that I have all of my photos up in the cloud. So they're actually stored up there and they are ready to go. My iCloud is almost full, so personally on the iCloud, I need a little bit more storage. Really quickly, before we get rid of that pesky, my phone's out of storage message, let's talk about purchasing iCloud storage. Manage storage. So should I buy more iCloud storage? Well, that really depends on how heavy of a user you are. If you're doing things like YouTube or creating content for any platform, you may take up a lot more room with photos and videos, so I would recommend definitely getting more storage. If you're someone who's a minimalist and uses your phone just to make phone calls and text, I probably wouldn't worry about it as much. So really, it's your discretion. Think of how much you use your phone before you buy that storage. Let's go back and talk about, again, that iCloud storage and iPhone storage and that pesky message saying that you're out of room. Well guys, that's a lot of information. So, so far we've covered what the Apple ID is, what the iCloud is, photo library, and purchasing more storage. Let's make sure that you guys understand. If you're getting this, please comment a cloud emoji down at the bottom. Now let's jump back in. We're about to finish up with storage and family share. So let's check out our storage by scrolling down, going to general, and in general, tapping on iPhone storage. Now this is a really great system because it's gonna break down everything on your device for you and show you what's taking up the most amount of room and what's taking up the least amount of room. Now quickly at the top, you'll notice uh, that it has photos and we'll talk about that recommendation in a moment with messages, but you'll see that my top one is photos with a whopping 76.64 gigabytes. 
Now that sounds like a lot, but if you remember my iCloud, it said that I had about 174 gigabytes of photos. So that's really only a fraction of the memory being taken up. But you need to realize that it's still gonna be a portion of memory taken up by your photos as it needs to show you your photos and videos. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is that top review large files message. This one gets people a lot. Oftentimes, if you turn on your iCloud storage and you synchronize everything and it looks like your pictures are not weighing as much on your phone, but you still don't have that much room, it's probably your messages. Think of this. Anytime that you receive a message with a picture or a GIF or a video, that gets saved in messages. It gets saved in the messages system. It doesn't actually go in your photos. If you tap on photos, you won't see those items there unless you save it to your photo library. Now, here's the mistake a lot of people make. A lot of people will take a photo or a video in a message and save it to their photo library. However, they will not delete it from their messages meaning it is now taking up space on both parts of your device. It's taking up space in messages and it's taking up space in photos. Consequently, it's also taking up space in both of those sections in iCloud, meaning that your iCloud is running out of room faster as well. So my pro tip and biggest recommendation is go into your review large attachments, go through your messages and your texts, save anything that you like into your camera roll. You can even make a new folder and then delete them from the message or delete the message thread. So remember, delete your large images and videos from messages. Now, before we move on, I wanna give you another pro tip. When it comes to photos in the actual photo section, please be careful. Remember that the photos in there are on your iCloud and really that's where they live your phone only has a portion of those photos and videos. So if you delete something from the Photos app, it will delete everywhere because it deletes from the cloud, deleting it from your Mac, your iPad, and your iPhone. So please keep that in mind when you're making room. Save images from messages and delete them in messages, but don't delete them from photos unless you want them permanently gone. So now we're getting a better understanding of iCloud and Apple ID. Apple ID is our purchasing power iCloud is our storage system. iCloud uses the backup, which is bulky but safe, to save your information, and it uses synchronization to help the flow and give you easier access to your information. iCloud Photo Library helps take off the load of photos and videos from your phone and handle them more on a cloud-based server while keeping only a portion of your stuff on your devices. So now that we've covered those two, let's go back. General settings. We'll scroll to the top and go back into our Apple ID. Now there are two more sections we haven't really spoken about in Apple ID. One being Find My and the last being Family Share. So we'll tackle Find My very quickly. I can always make a video about it later if you guys want, leave me a comment. Find My is just how you find your devices. If you have Find My iPhone, turn on Find My Mac, Find My iPad. Find My will really help you locate your device if you lose it. And last, we have Family Share. So what's Family Sharing? Well, Family Sharing is Apple's solution to the issue where multiple people could have the same Apple ID on their devices. And it asks for um, different passwords or for different payment methods that you may not be aware of or privy to at the moment. So let's start off by talking about how that happens. Remember earlier I said Apple ID is your purchasing power? Well, when we were younger and there were no such thing as iPhones and barely any iPods in the world, most families had a family computer at home and mom or dad would purchase music and or movies for the children and for themselves. So mom or dad would make an Apple ID on that account on the computer and use that for all purchases. Fast forward to iPhones and iCloud Multiple users in the family now want to get an iPhone, but they don't want to lose their purchases. So what mom and dad do is create them a new iCloud, but sign in to their Apple ID, which is possible. So people will notice that their Apple ID and their iCloud are different, and that multiple people have the same Apple ID. Now this becomes a really big problem when it comes to privacy because we don't want anyone's information mixing with our own. I don't want to accidentally charge something to your card and I definitely don't want you seeing my pictures. So let's not even share iCloud, right? 
So how do we solve this? How do we give everyone their own thing, their own separate identity, but allow everyone to take advantage of the purchases we've made together? In comes family sharing. With family sharing, Apple allows you to add up to six people from your household to be a family. What you can do, and something that a lot of us do, is everyone that gets a new device in the family creates their own Apple ID and iCloud. And then mom or dad or the main account holder for the purchases made on the family computer creates the family sharing account on their device and invites everyone else. Once you do, like the list you see on my phone, everyone will have their own Apple ID and their own iCloud. But if we scroll down, you'll see that you'll be able to turn on purchase sharing, meaning you'll be able to grab everyone in the family share. will be able to go back and grab all of the purchases made on the original Apple ID and on everyone else's Apple ID. So if you've bought an app that I want as well, and you now you're in my family sharing, I can get that app for free because someone's already paid for it in the family circle. So family sharing helps prevent that mix up and helps you share purchases. If you look with the advent of more iCloud storage, Apple now allows you to share iCloud storage with your family, which I no longer can do. Now that I've started YouTube, my photos and videos take up a lot of room. <laughs> You'll see location sharing is on. You'll see that screen time is there now. The screen time is very helpful for family sharing if you're using family sharing with a family that has minors in it. As screen time allows you to control the amount of time on a screen or any given app. Now, if you want more information about parental controls and screen time, leave a comment below and I can start working on that video. Under screen time, you'll see Apple's subscription-based services that can actually be shared via family sharing. What's really cool about this is that a lot of these services like Apple Music have a lower price for the family sharing or a better bundled price. So example, Apple Music is $10 a month for an individual, $9.99, while Apple Music Family is only $15 a month for six people. So the six of you can divide that payment and pay a lot less. So truly family sharing helps you share everything and all of your content across with your family and helps you limit what you're sharing and share the most of what you actually want to share. And if you have children in your family, screen time can really help you set the tone and set parental controls. Wow guys, that was a lot of information. I hope you guys got it. If you do, make sure you like the video and comment a little cloud emoji, iCloud team. <laughs> That was really, really fun. And if you guys like content like this, please let me know as I will work on more. As always, it's Groovy Tony. Make sure that you subscribe and ring the little bell. Bye.